In this first video, we're going to look at how the base of the watch was created, the geometry that was created, and also discuss the material that is applied to it. Hit the escape key to go to our batch schematic, and let's bring a new action tool into our scene. Select the action tool and hit the tilde key to go into the action schematic. Go to the node bin for the action tool, hit the three key on your keyboard, and then drag a 3D shape into our action schematic. Now we want to delete the axis and the default G mask that appears. So hit the D key to switch your tool to delete key and just click on the axis and the G mask and we'll get rid of those. Hit the M key afterwards to return back to the select tool. So now we just have our 3D shape with an axis connected to it. Select the 3D shape node, hit the G key with your cursor over your node bin and then drag a G mask ellipse tool into the scene. And since you had 3D shape selected, it'll automatically be connected to the 3D shape. Then we'll hit the F4 key to go to the result. Now we're in the draw shape tool automatically. So hold the alt and the shift key and just click and drag to create the elliptical G mask. Now this 3D shape is going to be the base of our 3D watch of the watch we're creating. I'll go back to the schematic quickly and select the axis on the very top and then go back to F4, the result view. Let's go to the object parameters and I want to just rotate this so that we can see the extrusion as we start to extrude the shape. So I'll rotate the X minus 50. Let's also enable the shading option. So we'll go to our node preferences, activate the shading option and then on the bottom make sure you put the shading at 100%. Go back to the schematic view and make sure you have the 3D shape selected now. Turn off our node preferences, we're done with those. And then from the basic parameters, we want to extrude this. We'll set the depth to 25. Now right away, let's assign a material to this to get it starting to look like the base that we want. So back in the schematic view, again, make sure you have your 3D shape selected. And then from our node bin, bring your cursor over it and hit the S key. And then grab and drag a substance texture into the schematic and we'll get the substance texture dialog box that will appear. Make sure you're in the plastic library for the substance textures if you're not. And I already have proxies displayed as you can see here. Select the substance texture that is named Kelvin Carbon Fiber. It's automatically applied as soon as you select it. We can see all the nodes for our substance texture have now been applied. Hit the F4 key once again to see the end result. Now we want to make some changes to the texture, such as scaling it. Make sure you select the axis that is directly above our substance textures and right below the material node. And then go back to the end result to see what happens as we make the adjustments. Make sure proportional is turned off in the very beginning and set the X scale value to 8 and our Y scale value to 10. Now when you zoom in, you're going to see the texture that we're creating. You'll see we've created a much smaller pattern that almost has a dot pattern to it. And then for the rotation, we're going to go to the Z parameter, our Z parameter, and enter 30. We'll zoom back our view a little bit to see more of our base. Let's go back to the schematic, our action schematic. I want to add a light into the scene, so hit the L key with your cursor over your tool bin and drag a light into the schematic. Double click on the light to access its parameters. Hit F4 once again. We want to position this light way off to the side. So we're going to go to the X value for the position and enter 5000. And then for our Y value, we're going to enter 2000. Now let's go to the intensity parameter and bring that up to 1,500. Then hit your tilde key to go back to our schematic and then select the shader that is part of our substance texture. The shader type for this is anisotropic and that's okay, leave it at that. We're gonna make some changes to the parameters directly below the shader type. So let's hit F4 once again so we see the end result. And then below the shader type, for the X value, enter 5, and for the Y parameter, enter 15. Now let's go back to the schematic view, select the Substance 1 Texture, and then for the Texture Resolution, 
click on the flyout and set it to 256 by 256. Hit F4 once again to return to our end result. And then on the basic controls, enter 0.4 for the luminosity. Now we've created our texture for our base. And if we want to see how it interacts, let's go back to our schematic. We can then select the top axis, and then using our X and Y rotation, we can rotate the base, and you can see how the texture is interacting with the light that we have placed off to the right-hand side. Right now, I have the icons turned off, so I'll hit the I key so that I can now see the icons and turn them on. And we want to duplicate this geometry. So let's go back to our schematic view, and I'll take the top axis, and I'm just going to move this up to give us a little more room. Then go to the action node bin, hit the A key and drag another axis into the scene and feed it in between the original axis and the 3D shape. Then while holding a control key down, click and drag over these four nodes to select them and hit the D key to duplicate them. Then select just the top axis of this new duplicated set and click the reset button on the bottom to reset all the parameters. Then click on our first axis, the very top axis, and drag and connect it to our new duplicated axis to make it a child of the original axis. Then click and drag off the new duplicated 3D shape and connect that to our material node. And finally, switch your tool to light link by hitting then the drag key. off the shader node and feed that into the 3D shape. Hit the M key to go back to our select tool. Select the axis for the new 3D shape. Let's go to its object tab. Let's also go back to our result view. Now for the Z position, we're gonna make some adjustments. We wanna raise this up a little bit. So enter a value of 25. So now we have two different geometries that are starting to create our base. And we wanna start punching holes in the second one to model the inset of the base. If I quickly step back out to batch we can see the end result and these are the cutouts or the insets that we're going to be creating that's part of the base so let's go back to the action node we were working in and then select the second geometry we've created go back to our node bin for action and hit the g key to access our gmask tools then drag a gmask ellipse tool into the schematic hit f4 for the results Holding the Alt and the Shift key, start to click and drag from the center to create a new elliptical mask. We're going to use this G-mask, as I said, to create a hole in the second geometry. With our 3D shape still selected, go back to the node bin, hit G key, and drag out another G-mask elliptical shape. We'll use that as a second hole that we're going to create. Once again, holding Alt and Shift, click and drag in the viewer and create a smaller G-mask shape. Then we want to position our new G-mask we just created. So go back to the schematic. Make sure you've got the axis selected for the newly created G-mask. Let's go back to our result view once again. Then using our X position, we're going to slide this G-mask over to the left. And then I'll make sure proportional is on for our scale. And now you can increase or decrease the scale to your liking to create the size of the G-mask. Now we want to set each one of these new G masks to be a hole. Now one after another, I will select the new G mask we created and then down on the spline setting for each of them, I will enable the option hole. Going back to the end result and turning off our icons, we can see exactly what we just did. Now to truly understand what we just did, let's go back to the schematic for a second. Let's then select the top axis for these two new geometries, and then we can start to change the Z position and even rotate it a little bit so you can see that we've punched through this second geometry with the other G mask. Then hit Control Z a couple times to undo that. Now we want to add one more hole in the top geometry, but we'll use a rectangle this time. So obviously we're going to use a G mask to do that. I'll hit the I key to turn my icons back on, go back to the schematic view and select the second geometry, the one just below the axis. Go back to our node bin, hit the G key once again, and then drag the GMAS rectangle tool out. It'll automatically attach to the select 3D shape. Hit F4, and then just click and drag to draw our new rectangle GMAS. 
Let's go back to its parameters to set this as a whole also. Now we'll use the vertices to position it where we want it to be. So I'll region select these two vertices on the left hand side. Make sure you hold control and click and drag. Select the vertices option, then using the X translate, we're just gonna drag to the right to position it over here. I'll hit the I key twice to turn off the icons. And now we see the three different geometries that are punching a hole through the top geometry that is part of our base. We wanna make one more hole in the geometry, but we're gonna put it in the lower geometry, the bottom part of the base. And we wanna have a little square over in this area. So let's go over to the action schematic again. We wanna make sure we select the first 3D shape we created, this one over here on the left. Go to our node bin, hit the G key once again, drag a GMask rectangle tool back into the schematic, and you'll see that it automatically attaches to our original 3D shape, because that's what was selected. Then go back to our end result, and click and drag and create a rectangle GMask. Notice that it's punching a hole through the first geometry, because that's what it's attached to. Go back to the schematic view and select the axis for this new G mask we just created. F4, back to our. Using the X position slider, we'll drag it over to the right hand side. Then we'll go back to our schematic and select the main axis. Reset the rotation parameters by holding control and clicking in their fields. So now we're looking straight at our geometry again. Back in the schematic, select the axis for this new G mask and go back to our end result. Now we want to position this precisely where we want it. You can also adjust the vertices of the mask. So we can region select the vertices on the left or the right, and then use the translation parameter down in our G mask controls to fine tune the size. Once again, back in our schematic, I select the main axis. And if I rotate it, you can see we've punched a hole through the bottom part of our base. Now we want to add a white rectangle inside of this hole that's being punched through. Once again, we go back to the original end result. You can see this is what we're trying to create. Let's go back to our action schematic. We want to add another 3D shape into the scene. Make sure that top axis is selected and drag a 3D shape into the schematic it'll automatically be attached to our top axis. Once again, I'll hit the D key to get the delete tool and I'm gonna delete the axis and the actual G mask that was attached to this. Then select the 3D shape we just created. Then drag a G mask rectangle into the schematic. Hit the F4 key once again, and now drag and draw a new G mask rectangle shape. Go back to our schematic view once again, select the axis of the G mask we just created and hit the D key to duplicate them. And then drag and draw off the 3D shape and attach it to the new axis we just duplicated. And with the new duplicated axis for this GMAS selected, we'll go back to our end result, go to the object parameters for this axis, and let's scale this down to about 91. So it's just a little bit smaller than the other GMask. I'll hit the I key twice to display all the icons. So now you can see that we have the two G masks we just created. One's a little bit bigger than the other one. And because we scale it down, we have a smaller one also. But right now it's centered into our base. That's not where we want it. So let's go back to the schematic and select the axis that is controlling both these new G masks we just created. Hit F4 for the end result. And use the X translate to slide it over to the right and fit it in that open area we just created earlier. I'll hit the I key a couple times just to hide all the icons. So now we have our white rectangle positioned in our open area on the right hand side. But now we want to put a number inside of this area. So I'll go back to my schematic view and I'll drag a 3D text into the scene and then I'll drag off the main axis and connect it to the 3D text we just created. Once again, we hit F4 to go back to our end result. I'll hit I once again to turn our icons back on. And with my text axis selected, I'll use the X parameter and slide over till I see the word text in the open area. Let me jump back into the schematic and select our 3D text, go back to our end result. 
click in the text field and enter the number seven. Let me hit the I key twice again to turn off all icons so we can see the number seven. Down in my text fields, I'm gonna take my size and drag it up to increase the size of my text. I'll bring it to about 134, go back to the schematic view, select the axis for the text, and then with proportion off for this axis, I'll scale it in the X value. Let's go back to the schematic again and let's add another axis to further control this text. Hold the shift key when you drag it over the connection lines and it'll automatically connect this axis. Now make sure that axis is still selected. Let's hit F4 to go back to the end result view. I'll hit the I key to turn our icons back on and you'll see that that new selected axis is at the center of our base. And now when we rotate this and the Z value, you can see we can animate the numbers to be changing if we wanted to. So if we wanted to, we could add more numbers and repeat the same process and then animate them to have the number changing over time. Now let's add some shadows. So we'll go back to our schematic view once again. So select the light that we created, and then go down to our node bin again, hit the S key, and then drag a shadow cast into the scene. It'll be attached to our selected light. Hit F4 once again, and now we see the shadows. Now if we want to display two views at once, let's hold Alt and hit the 2 key. This way we have our schematic on the left and the end result on our right. And then with the shadow cast selected, we can hit the H key to toggle our shadow cast from being hidden and not hidden, and we see the effect inside the end result. Taking it further, let's add some ambient inclusion. So select our camera. Select the matchbox bin, and I'll hit the S key. And then let's drag a Stingray ambient inclusion into the scene. As soon as you let go, it's connected to our camera, and you can see in the end result the ambient inclusion effect. And then again, just like the shadow cast, with the ambient inclusion selected, we can hit the H key to turn on and off or hide and unhide the result. I'll go back to one viewport with Alt-1 and then make sure I have the main axis for everything selected. And then in the end result view, we can start to rotate our shape. Now we've created the base geometry for our watch. That's gonna end this video up to this point. In the next video, we're gonna start creating some of the dials and other details that are part of our watch.